One of the things I really hope to achieve with my YouTube channel is to allow me to expand the types of games that I play. Story rich, point and click type adventure games is something that I've neglected over the years. Now, I did play these when I was a kid, but I thought of myself as having matured past them and they evolved over time while I was not paying attention to them. When I came across Jenny LeClue Detective Vu, this looked like a great opportunity for me to rekindle that interest in these games. It appeared to have very high production values, and even though the game's coming out to Switch very soon, it's already been out on PC for almost a year and has gotten mostly praise since its initial release. Regardless of that praise though, this game has gone somewhat under the radar. It doesn't appear as though there are that many reviews out there, and while some of the bigger outlets did review the game, those reviewers have had kind of mixed messages, unlike the players which, as I previously said, seem to like this game. One thing that needs to be very clear though with this particular game is that it is a lot more story than it is game. There are some puzzle elements to this experience and there are some platforming elements to this experience, but for the most part, you go through and answer a few questions, make some decisions that are mostly inconsequential and just play through this captivating and charming story. Unfortunately though, the majority of my comments here are very positive on Jenny LeClue. It's not without a couple reservations that I have. One in particular, that's a little bit spoilery, so I'd like to save that for the end of this video. So if people don't want that criticism because they don't want it spoiled, they can opt out of that. The bulk of this experience though is going to be based on the story of the game and here the presentation is what? almost Ooh. flawless. It follows two different storylines, one about an author who is struggling and his publisher would like him to make changes to a long-standing series, the Jenny LeClue series, so that it is more interesting for modern readers. He, however, is reluctant yes, to do yes. so and is gotten a little bit stagnant and a little bit set in his ways. Then, in the world of the Jenny LeClue story, you have Jenny LeClue, who is dealing with a mystery that unfolds within her world. And very minor spoiler here, there is a murder in her world, which is an exceptional thing for it to happen. And she has to solve that murder as it impacts people that are close to her. The real dynamic in this story, though, is about growth. It's about change and about accepting that Things in the world are going to be different as you go. The author, in this particular case, has to learn that his characters need growth in order for them to be interesting, but by his characters growing, he himself also grows along the way. And this is shown throughout the story as well. In the beginning of the story, everything seems very Brady Bunch, very perfect, very Beaver Cleaver, right? And some of the stuff is extremely cliche, but as the story moves along and as things proceed, it gets darker, it gets a little grittier, but there ends up being a lot more growth and those cliche elements start to fall away. We start to see new characters like one of Jenny's friends that happens to be a very rich girl, which typically is shown in movies and media as being rich snobs. But this girl happens to be pretty, but then happens to be exceptionally nice and also exceptionally smart. She seems to be this kind of whole package character but she ends up being very believable at the same time. And this is really the crux of why this story is good, is that everything is believable. The dialogue is believable. Even though the characters, some of them are unconventional, and some of them are kind of cliche, they're all very believable. These are likable characters. Even the ones that you might have a distaste for, you know that character, you've met these people before. And because of that, it really ties the primary facet of this game, which is its story, all together. The gameplay in Jenny LeClue does leave something to be desired. The puzzles are often repeated in different flavors of the same thing. The platforming elements are mostly just click to climb over, but this game isn't really focusing on gameplay specifically. It's more just the experience and the story and how everything makes you feel. And regarding the experience of this game, if you hold the gameplay aside and its shortcomings, 
the presentation here is phenomenal. There was a good deal of care that went into the cinematography in this game and making it feel not just like you're a part of this world that you're going through, but that you were seeing it through the eyes of Jenny LeClue and you were seeing it through the eyes of the author and seeing their perspectives in this world and not just their perspective, but you were seeing it through their own flawed lens. There's one scene, particularly after an accident with Jenny, where Jenny has this almost nightmarish experience and she wakes up to find out that that nightmarish experience was mostly a metaphor for what was going on in the real world, but also what had happened in the real world previous to the game starting. And it kind of mixed it all together in this fever dream experience that she has that in the moment is very horrifying, but in retrospect, when you realize what was actually happening, sends a true impact to the player or experiencer of this game. So the gameplay elements are kind of ho-hum. The story is really great and the characters and the world is really fleshed out. But what are my criticisms? Well, I have two. And as I said previously, one of them is kind of spoilery. And so I'll start with the first one. There's no manual save in this game, which at first I thought was fine. I've seen some players complain about that, hoping that they could make different decisions, even though this, the decisions again in this game, pretty inconsequential, but they'd like to see that. For me though, because I had no manual saves, I ran into a bug at one point in the game and it was game ending. It actually stopped my save progression and I was stuck in the game and would have had to restart the game had I not had a cloud save on my secondary switch that I was able to just pick up and run with go back through that piece of the game and I was able to proceed. Now bugs aren't something that this game is particularly known for. I did my homework on this and not a lot of people are finding these types of bugs, but apparently I did run into one, so they can exist. That's unfortunate. This game's somewhere between seven and 12 hours long. And if you get towards the end and were to run into a bug, it's game over for you. For that reason, I think the game really does need manual saves, even though the developer seems reluctant to add them into the game. And then there is my spoilery criticism. So, big spoiler sign here. So, this game has a cliffhanger for an ending, and that wouldn't have been a big deal had it been more clear that this would be episodic. And it doesn't look like it's going to be added onto this game. More than likely, it's going to be added on as a second game. So if you'd like to follow the journey of Jenny LeClue, you're going to have to buy a separate game. To me, this isn't a really huge deal that you would have to buy another game because we're used to buying games in episodes. And this game does do a pretty good job of wrapping up this specific mystery. About 75% of the plot points get wrapped up, but there are a lot of questions that you end this game with. And there are a number of questions that it just kind of drops on you right at the last second and then closes it with a to be continued. So my criticism here is not as much in the execution of how the game handled this episodic to be continued cliffhanger type of situation. It was more that there was no information to preempt the player to know that that was about to happen. The final experience for me was that it didn't leave me feeling particularly bitter. It really made me feel like I wanted more, which I think was the intention from the developers here. So my overall thoughts here as I'm wrapping this thing up is, is this game worth it and who's it for? For me, I think that it really worked because I'm a game player that likes to play different things but likes to see different worlds through a different perspective. I am a man that's in his 30s and so for me it was novel to see Jenny's world through her eyes as a young girl. I also got to see a little bit of Arthur, the author's world, through his eyes and his struggles. But as a game player, that's what I'm after. I want to be Nathan Drake. I want to be Kratos. I want to be Master Chief. And I think this game did that for me in an entertaining way. I hope you've enjoyed this review. And until next time, this has been Pixel. I killed him.
This is all wrong. Murder in Arthurton? 